Jason Reitman, everybody! Good to see you. Great. Uh, congratulations, young man. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I got to imagine that you... It's one thing to have a film that people like, and then you have a couple of films that people like, then you have three films that people like. So and then, then you have a film people hate. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> they don't hate it, do they, yet? No, I haven't no, heard that. No, no. <laughs> no but when, when you know that you've established your own name now, mm -hmm. that, you know, you are your own bona fide um, person in this business, do you have to approach your material differently? Do you have to approach how you get this film made differently? You know, uh, not really. I think you're just as terrified every time. Frankly, so and you are. So you're at orange alert the whole time, or? Oh yeah, I, th I think closer to red. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it just happens that way. I think um, you get up for every game, and y you forget the last one. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't think when I go to make Labor Day, I don't think it, of it in context with the other films that I've made. You know, my experience with this book was I read it, I fell in love with it, and I wanted to somehow create a cinematic experience that mirrored what it was like to read that book for the first time. So, see, so someone. Leaked you the book, said yeah. I'm gonna take it. Somebody like Wiki leaked it to you. <laughs> you read it and went, I wanna make this film. Julian Assange he did. sent me the book. <laughs> He's like, love this, brought listen, me to tears. Listen, you're gonna dig it. Listen, dude, if you're gonna spend Also, here's a really messed up video from Iraq, <laughs> but <laughs> But look, he's, Whatever, got, he's you know. got a lot of time on his hands in that embassy, right? <laughs> yeah, so exactly. he, he can do it. Dear Jason, Ecuador's whatever. So, <laughs> well, so, then, so what's the process to go get the book? You call your agent, you say, I want to get this done. Did the author want to give it up, the, the people who own the rights to it? Yeah, you know, it was written by Joyce Maynard, who also wrote the book that the movie To Die For was based on. And uh, Such a bizarre story. To die for her. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 no kidding. <laughs> One of the things I love about you, you are ready to go down any avenue. Yeah. I could literally bring up, I could literally bring up anything right now. I'd be like, like, how about that movie Clute? And you'd be yeah. like, I know, Donald Sutherland, right? Old and then you school. just go into it. His eyes were still young yeah, then, there you right? Go. His exactly. eyes were young. Listen, what about Zambian politics, right? I once saw a protest in Zambia, sincerely, <laughs> and I was there. I love my time in Zambia. <laughs> But this is about you. <laughs> so, okay, so you, so you guys, so Joyce wrote the book To Die For. This is not like To Die For. You though. are truly the most impressive Canadian. No, I no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 you are. We, uh... You're not new to adapting a book, but when you adapt a story that's basically in the galley stage, mm -hmm. like you take this film that you're going to make, and the general public doesn't really know the story yeah. yet. Is that different than trying to? Like, can you imagine trying to adapt something like The Hunger Games or, or something? Twilight or, or Twilight, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'd be terrified. I remember when uh, Fifty Shades of Grey was yeah. open, it was an open assignment. My agent actually brought it up to me. I was like, do you want to adapt this? Yeah. And I, I thought, if you adapt something like that, you're only, I'm glad you had, all right, I'm announcing it. I'm actually. Um, would you like to play Anna we, or would you like to gonna, play Christian Grey? We're going to do a proper reading. Which one do you want to be, Anna or Christian Grey? I have never read either. You, okay, rock and roll. <laughs> it's funny that you brought up Fifty Shades of Grey because when I asked you about Hunger Games, yeah. in my head I thought, what would Fifty Shades of Grey look like if Reitman made it? Right. It'd be funny. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> okay, you're you're great. You start. I'm the I'm the uh, I'm the highlighted lines. Yes. Okay. <sighs> and the boy I met yesterday at the store is not your boyfriend. No, Paul's just a friend. I told you yesterday. Oh, this is getting silly. Why do you ask? You seem nervous around men. Holy crap. That's personal. I'm just nervous around you, Gray. I find you intimidating. Wow. I flush scarlet, but mentally, mentally pat myself on the back for my candor, and I gaze at my hands again. I hear a sharp intake of breath. You should find me intimidating. He nods. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mystery, Miss Steele. Mysterious? Me? Mm. There's nothing mysterious about me. I think me. you're self-contained, murmurs. <laughs> Am I? How? How am I imagining that? This is bewildering me. Okay, this is getting hot. Um. <laughs> <laughs> How far does this go? No, oh, we just getting hot. We don't have to do it. So, so, so they, they did yeah, come. When do we take our clothes off? Um, <laughs> just after the police billy club comes in. Just after. <laughs> um, I, I'm not about that. <laughs> But did, so you looked at this sincerely at this at the story? No, no. I mean, I, I, what I was going to say is that I can't imagine adapting something that people have such a strong relationship with, where you're only going to let them down. Well, I mean, you obviously grew up around uh, actors of big name, but what, it, it, you start to direct them now. And if you start to look at the list of people, you're a young man, but look at the list of people 
who've worked in your films. It's too. insane. It's kind of wild. No, man. it's insane, and, and it makes me feel very, very lucky. I'm, I've been lucky since day one. I literally have been lucky since I was a sperm. Take it. I mean, it. Uh, no, it's true. I, uh, I, when people ask me, you know, how do you become a director? I always say, and the first piece of advice, be the son of a famous director. <laughs> it's a huge advantage. I, I'd say anyone, like just that is step one, go for it. Uh, very and, honest. I like that. Um, and no, I've been very lucky and I've worked with brilliant actors since day one and I've been very lucky that they've said yes. And uh, I mean, no more than now. I mean, Kate Winslet is just Dude. the finest actress of her generation and the only actress who could play this role. We waited a year for her. Really? Yeah, she said, I'd love to do this movie, I can do it in a year. And I said, all right, I'll see you in a year. And you waited? Oh, I made a movie in between. That's how Young Adult happened. Really, just while you were waiting for it? Yeah, I was like, all right, we got a year. Diablo's like, I got a script. All right, let's go make a movie. <laughs> do you know what's next? Can you see what Cloud Yeah, yeah? No, I've already, I've adapted a book that I'm yeah. gonna make called Men, Women, and Children, which is a movie about how the internet has changed our sex lives. How has it changed your sex life? <laughs> Enough that I had to look at myself in the mirror and say, is it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> Stick Honestly, around, more God. with Jason after this. <laughs> okay. You worked on a Kindergarten Cop, right? Do you, like, do you yes. have a PA on that? Well, I was a PA and I also have one line of dialogue yeah. in kindergarten. You don't have a clip of that, do you? No, I can find it, though. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. I, 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 I have a feeling I know where this is going. I want to be a man of my word. <laughs> and I, I said okay. I, I could find it, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Young Jason Redman. Please! <laughs> don't you know the building is on fire? I thought it was another drill. Well, get out! Yes, sir. No. Uh, so, do we have to recreate another scene? You you look mm -hmm. an awful lot like McLovin in that particular <laughs> moment of your life. Oh yeah, I was a really popular young guy. So you obviously had known you wanted to do, be in the film business for since you were a kid, right? Yeah, I assume. that right. was my first kiss, by the way. That was your your first kiss. My first kiss was directed by my father. Weird. <laughs> He didn't even have the decency to have a second unit director do it? No, 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 there were takes. <laughs> imagine, all right, imagine you're like, <laughs> my dad goes in one morning and he says, so I thought of a scene that I'd yeah. like to do and then I'm, I'm a production assistant, I'm 13 years old or 14 years old, I'm on the set of Kitter and Cop, but I said, I, I think I have a scene, you know, it'd be fun, it'll be you and a girl and you're making out in a, in a teacher's lounge and Arnold comes in with a gun and at first I'm like, oh, awesome, I'm gonna kiss a girl. And then I was like, oh no. <laughs> like, my dad's gonna be dressed. So he would come in between takes, like, that was gonna be, I mean, don't be afraid to like, like really get in there. I mean, just like, you know, like get your hands around her and like, and then the whole crew is there. Right. And Arnold, and I, I remember like walking out and I was like, hey, good job, nicely yeah. done. Yeah, like. <laughs> How about when you started to direct, when you were young, you know, like the early yeah. stuff? You know, as a teenager, I started making videos and I would use my dad's video camera and I would start doing stuff. But uh, when I was 16, I got scared by the entire idea of directing, and I actually, I went to college and I went pre-med. Really? But, and I, I have to share this, um, in that moment of fear, and in that moment of going off to college and going pre-med and thinking, I'll become a doctor, because no one questions, no one's ever like, doctor, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's what the world needs, another doctor, you know? <laughs> uh, uh, no, my father <laughs> sat me down, he took me out to this diner and he sat me down, and he told me a great story from growing up here in Toronto when he had gone to my grandfather, who was a Holocaust survivor, and said to my grandfather, hey, I want to start this sandwich shop up in Toronto. Will you give me the money for it? And my grandfather said to my father, I could give you the money to do that, and you might be successful, and your mother and I would be very proud, but I think you need to find something that has magic in it. And in that moment of me being terrified, my father sat me down and said, there's no more noble a profession in the world than being a doctor. And if you became a doctor, your mother and I would be, we'd be over the moon. But I don't think there's enough magic in it for you. I think you're a storyteller and you have to follow your heart. And that's why I became a director. What a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so this film, and it's the kind of film you can go see with, you know, with somebody you're on a date with, but it's also the kind of film that you can go see with your family. So, uh, it, it, and if you have any issues whatsoever with your father, 
be prepared to talk about it afterwards. It's Labor Day. It opens this Friday. Jason Wright. Thank you.